3.58 for seven, I see on the scoreboard to our left as we walk past that. Alistair uh, is with me. We are saying what, half an hour ago, we thought England were a little bit under par. How does that look now to you? Yeah, I, I still think they're a little bit under par in terms of wickets lost on this wicket. However, they're in this game by a long way. Sri Lanka are going to have to, to bat very well um, to, 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 to stay in the game and get back ahead of England. England would be a little bit frustrated, seven wickets down, but 358 runs is a, is a lot of runs. We're still actually, the way Atkinson's playing and, and, and Potts and Stone, who's scored quite a few runs when he's played this year for, for not, so they'll be hoping to get 430, 440. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because you look at it from a Sri Lankan perspective and, and there was surprise this morning uh, when they put England to bat on a beautiful day and all those stats that Andy Zoltzman was saying about the least movement sort of, uh, since the, I don't know, the Jurassic period or something. Uh, you know, it's been a really good day to bat, hasn't it? And I wonder how they would look back and actually sort of why they did it because it was, it was like this. It's been a flawless blue sky virtually all day. Yeah, I'm, I'm still not sure why they did it. Certainly, uh, Lords as well dries out. Can, can go a little bit low, can spin. Their strength is bowling wicket to wicket. Jasper is a good left arm spinner as he, as he bowled well at Old Trafford. So it felt again a bit of a, a defensive it's a move, negative move, a yeah. defensive move from what happened in their top order um, at Old Trafford, being six for three, two for one. So, but they made the decision. They stuck at their guns well. They, they were decent enough in the field. They didn't drop any chances. So it's not that they had a bad day. I just thought they had an opportunity. They were winning the toss at Lords, and if you don't, if you are, if you are bowled at 150 or you're on a good day, you don't deserve to win a Test match anyway. But they no. their batting lineup with their experience and their runs, their averages are good. So it would have been quite annoying that they didn't take that opportunity to do it. Joe Root's walking past. I'll see you in a minute, Joe. Well played. He's going to go and do TV first and then we'll have a chance to chat to Joe. And he gave us a big smile there, so I think he's, he's in a good mood. I mean, it, it was 190 for five or so at one stage. It, it was an innings that, it, well, it, it required some rebuilding uh, and he was quite careful. He wasn't a flamboyant route. It wasn't a baseball route. I mean, it ended as a baseball route, but all the way through, actually up to that point, it was just like, like, like Joe Root plays. Absolutely, he was he was risk free, and still strikes at sixty odd, which is what has made him, which is what has made him why a, a good a player as he is. Because the margin for error to bowl at him is very slim. He's got all the shots, and when he does then play attacking shots, they are they're risk free attacking shots. Normally, we take we'll take the final shot out of it, but that was the old Joe Root. Like he's very hard to bowl at. He, he finds knocking the singles incredibly easy, and then is good enough to, to to hit the bad ball for four. So, I mean, just an absolute class act to bat to bat with, to watch, and to play. And this won't be his last hundred for England. And there's no. and the hunger he's shown. You know, we keep going back to Bumrah's <laughs> that shot he played in India. Because then since that, he's got seven, every test match he's got 50 and he's got 200s with it. So that hunger at 33, 34 to keep on piling on the runs is still there. And I can't, can't quite see when it's going to slow down. No, it, it's a tricky one because he, 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 he did play so well. And it got us thinking, well, look, you know, because there, there had been talk, hadn't there, about how Joe Root fitted into that, that bad ball and the way that he played, sort of strokes that he played. And that Boomer one was... It, it seemed to be the last one, really. But then he got out <laughs> playing that uh, today. And so I don't quite know. I mean, it, it, is it, is it fair, fair dues to play that when he got 140 on the ball? But then there was a new ball in two overs time. And it, as a batsman, you, you're pretty driven, therefore, not to get out, aren't you? I mean, it, it's, it's all a bit confusing. Well, there's an element, I think, with great players that you need a, an element of stubbornness to you. You need some of that self-belief which not that other players don't have and he has that self-belief and that stubbornness almost to prove us wrong up in the media box sure. and well I can play that shot so I'm going to play the shot he'll say the shot was on I, I hope today that he, he was he was angry when he got out you saw his reaction getting Indeed. out I just hope today whatever that shot he played to get out with when there was there was a double hundred on the cards for him however let's just 3300s is an unbelievable achievement. Yep. It's a bit strange, I suppose, me talking about an unbelievable achievement because you know I, I was lucky enough to score 3300s. But I just hope today, he, when he has a beer at the end of the play tonight, he appreciates that's a hell of a stat. Yeah.
Michael Vaughan's arrived. Good evening. Um, I, I've, got a, I've got to do my button up on my jacket. I spilled some coffee down my white shirt. <laughs> you're actually, you've got, you've got coffee down your shirt, your flies are undone, you're an absolute shambles. What's going on? <laughs> I'm sorry, my trousers are too small. Apart from that, I'm doing all right. Um, oh, yeah, what an achievement. I mean, I, I, have you been criticising his reverse scoop, have you? No, we're we're no, just saying how confusing it was, yeah. the, the, the way that he played uh, and the way that he seemed to have binned that stuff, yeah. that, that he got out like but that. But I don't mind him getting out playing that shot when he's on 143 and he's kind of dictated the day. Um, he'll probably put that into the locker now for a, a few more months. Uh, he, he played from the minute that he walked out there, that little clip off the, the hips, first ball for four. Oh, he, he gets to 20 and it, it was like... <laughs> Obviously, he's going to go and get three figures on a good pitch against an attack that's got a little bit of something, but not a great deal. Uh, he's a wonderful player. I, I said on air, I, I think he's the, the perfect role model for any player that's setting out to try and play the game. I know we're, we're in an era where the ball flies to all parts and these brutality of uh, strikers uh, go out there and smack it to all parts, but give me a Joe Root. You know, across yeah. all the formats, you know, he's a brilliant T20 player, he's a brilliant 50 overs player. And he's a magnificent Test match player. I think Test match cricket is where I, I, I prefer watching him play. I think he is a master of just working out the situation, working out the pitch, working it uh, against all the different types of bowlers, what's on, what's not on. Um, and he's up there with the great players, particularly against spin. You know, I think he's England's greatest batter, in my opinion, across all the formats. And I think you can put him in the greatest category against spin of all the players that have played over many, many years. I just think he's a, a master at the way that he plays spin. Do you think he was a bit confused uh, over the last couple of years about how he should play and how he should fit into this team? Not least because he, he, he was the outgoing captain, and that's a difficult position as well. You've, you've got to be seen to be going with the, new, with, with the new regime, haven't you? You can't be the grumpy captain complaining in the corner. Absolutely, and I think that's why he played those shots, because... He, he was so aware, and I, you know, I, I suppose was a previous captain who then fitted back into the setup. And you're so aware of not, I was not stepping on Joe Root's toes, yeah. not saying stuff in team meetings which would, was different to the message that the captain was given. I, you, when you're captain, it's your show. When you're not captain, you, um, you know, you just buy into what's there. And I, I dis definitely disagreed certain things that Joe Root did as a captain. You're allowed to disagree, like, but I would never would have said it in a, in a public meeting. If I would have said it, I would have said it to Root over a beer behind closed doors because that was my. There's no way you'd have a, a thing like that. So when Ben Stokes is saying we want to play like this, he would be, he would be over conscious about making sure you know, I don't want to be the person that doesn't buy it. And we no. all know why Ben Stokes did it, and it wasn't for Joe Root. It was for the other six batters in that side so that they could get the best out of their ability. And, but Joe saw it as like, well, if they're doing that, I've got to do that. And so, and, so that's why he did it. And ultimately, in journeys, he still averaged 50 doing it. He just striked at 70, which is... Yeah. Uh, it, but there was just... Today, there was the inevitability back again. When he got past 20, I think we all looked at each other and we thought... Unless something happens on 99 or something like he was getting 100. And I think that's, that's the Joe Root I remember playing with, where probably in that, that, that two-year period where he still scored hundreds, he still played match winning, there's a little bit, what, is he going to do something a little bit different? But today, pure class and that, that inevitability was back again. Yeah. What about the rest of the batting? Michael, I was talking to Alistair on the way over about where England are in, in this game. And they've obviously got good runs on the board for a, a day's play. How, what about the number of wickets lost and, and, and how they were lost? Oh, I mean, yeah, you can look at that. I mean, they'll be delighted with 3.58. I think we saw in the last session that Sri Lanka just tired. Yeah. You know, the, the likes of Kamara who's not been playing, he bowled that, that opening. But I think he bowled 11 overs inside the first 27 as a quick bowler. That's too many. Um, you know, only three seams. I think we, we, we saw that in the last session that Sri Lanka just ran out of a bit of gas. Um, you know, you look at Dan Lawrence, an opportunity missed for him. He played at a poor stroke. Uh, Ollie Pope's a concern. You know, coming at number three, he looks so frantic. And for such a good player, I, I'm just amazed that, you know, the psychologists that, you know, and all the kind of backroom team that England have, they can't just calm him down just a little bit just to give himself more of an opportunity to... I'm just going to gonna steal Tig, Tim Wigmore's stat from The Telegraph, um, who says... Uh, well, they said he's the worst starter uh, in English Test history because he's now been dismissed within 20 balls in 38% of his Test innings. That, that's, that's, a, that's a high number, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. A, and then, you know, you, you look at that and think, you know, in a year's time, Bummer and Co, Cummins and Co in Australia, he has to find a mechanism of, of calmness because he can play. You know, we've seen some incredible innings. 
you know, and I, I'm looking at him thinking he just needs a little bit of a composure. I mean, if I was him, I'm sure he does this. He's got the best sitting next to him, Joe Root. Joe Root has the most amazing mentality. He comes down here, he's got an amazing routine, he stretches, touches his toes, and then he gets his legs going, then he sprints on. Yeah. It's Joe Root's routine. I don't know whether I look at Ollie Pope and see a routine, you know, a process. You know, I see someone that kind of gets out there, takes guard, and before you know it, you know, things look a bit too frantic. You know, if I was uh, Ollie Pope, as much as a psychologist can, can help you, this guy, Joe Root, could help him a huge amount. And I'm sure that's happening, but he can only do it himself. Yeah. You know, he needs to find that mechanism of a process that calms him down when he first goes out to the middle. Just on that stat, it'd be really interesting to see how many times it's an attacking shot he gets out to. Mm. Because actually today, in his whatever ball, I don't know how many balls he faced today, that was a big shot to play. Yeah. Like, that is a shot. That's a shot of a guy on... 120 because it's just back of a length he's trying to pull it now if you know you're not a great starter and those stats are proving it surely you've got to say right Mike, the, thir the first 30 balls are, are the bowlers for me like, like Joe is slightly different other people are slightly different like Graham the great Graham Thorpe he, he actually attacked he want, his way of method was getting in was actually attacking the first 20 balls because then once he said he got to 15-20 he actually then settled down because he just fell to ease well actually Ollie Pope by being the, just the way he started in his test career, he's been aggressive, I think. He's actually got out to it. So maybe mm. he might have to say, well, actually, that calmness, mm. whatever, saying, right, the way I'm starting in is the best of it is actually trying to soak up impression and have, and have the courage to do that. Have Good. the courage to be two or 30 balls. He has to change. You know, you can't just keep going out there. You look at his first ball today. It's a, a length ball, probably uh, four or five inches outside off stump, and his hands are gone, and it bounced. All right, there's extra bounce, but... Most players are leaving. He went at it. You, yeah. You're just leaving that. He's so anxious to, to get bat on ball. And I totally agree with Cookie that, you know, he needs to try and change a mechanism and, and, a, and a different approach because those, for a number three, those stats aren't great. You know, they're, they're not good at all. And, and when the attacks get better, and they will do in a year's time and potentially in the winter, you just have to have a composure. Your number three usually is the calmest player because you've lost a wicket and your job then is to send the message to the dressing room, don't worry, things are fine out here. And usually you're up against a new, but you generally lose an early one. You know, that's the nature of test match cricket, usually and inside the first 10 overs. And your job is to just calm things down and just play. You look at someone like a Jonathan Trott. Yes. He was a calm number three. All right, not all number threes are the same. You want difference, but... You know, those stats are glaring and Ollie has to work something out inside himself. I don't like him as the captain. I don't think he's, um, you know, the kind of personality that I'd want as the England captain. I think he's, he's quite an insecure um, human, a great, great team guy. I think he's a great person. And I think by throwing the captaincy on him, I think that's added extra pressure. He was doing great at number three, and obviously he's just interim for this series, and Ben will be back in a month or so's time. There are not many other obvious candidates, to be well, fair, I look at Harry Brook. I mean, I'll yeah. keep going on, but Harry Brook, for me, is an England captain uh, in the making. I, I don't see Ollie Pope as that person, so I just wonder if the extra pressure has come on from him having the captaincy. Here he is. <laughs> look at his face. That is, that is one big smile, Joe. Yeah. Alistair Cook, 33 equal. <laughs> That's a huge smile. Well played. Well played. Thanks. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> and you, well, you clearly enjoyed it, and you're enjoying all of this too. Yeah, it was a nice day in the end. To, um, <laughs> look at this. Um, a selfie in there. A selfie at that, with, yeah. From where we were at one stage for us to be in the position of strength that we are now, I think it's really pleasing. And I, what an innings from Gus so far. Um, he's just struck the ball like Jack Callis today. It's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, it's a great way to finish things off and leading into tomorrow. Um, it'd be nice to still be there with him, but that's how it goes sometimes. Sometimes it, you get it, a good one. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wasn't going to talk about that shot, but I'm, you've brought it up. Yeah. Right. Do you want to know? I want to know that, that in, in, in the Basball era, were you a little bit unsure of how you fitted into that what's that and, got to do with that shot there well because you because you just you played so Joe Root up to that point and you just and, and you have done since since India you've been very successful at, at, at yeah. playing the Joe Root way I'm just a bit surprised you got out like that that was all of you you looked a bit disappointed oh, with it well because I got out I think you could play any shot and get out I think more so the we got in a, in a position where you, we brought back the, th the seamer again before the second new ball and we limited their options for the last hour or so's play. It was more about trying to mentally really nail, put a nail in the coffin going into that second new ball and then um, be able to really drive home the last hour. We could have ended up getting 30, 40 more runs 
if that was the case and then we'd be you know 400 on the board uh, one less wicket down potentially and in a real position of strength so I think it depends how you look at the game you can um, I don't like to be driven by fear and when I'm out there you're looking at opportunities how you're going to score how you're going to move the game forward and felt like I'd earned the right to do that in that situation um, so uh, yeah that was the thought process out there how can we really you know, having done all that hard work getting in a position where we could drive the game how could we do it and that felt like an option that I could utilise to do that Okay. I, I, you will leave here. I'm not going to tell you how to bat, Joe. I can promise you that. And it's very easy up there. Um, but you are playing beautifully at the moment. If, yeah, if, it's, it feels good. Um, I feel like I'm in a good place. I, not, I'm not in that perfect state of Nirvana where you're just not even thinking. Um, and you feel like you're out of your... I think sometimes when you play it at your absolute best, you, you don't even think about anything. You just It's almost like you're hovering outside of your body and it just sort of does it for you. Um, but be able to manage different parts of the game. Um, when it doesn't feel right, be able to not let it get to me and um, just find a way of, of getting through certain periods. That I think that's a nice place to, to be. And, and this innings, to have been, what, about 190 for five or thereabouts, what I guess a lot of what you'll take away from the innings is the fact it's really important for the, for the team as well in, the, in, that, in that situation. Yeah, and that partnership at the end as well, that's really important too, and that shouldn't be overlooked or overshadowed the uh, two lads there to, to get us to uh, come back tomorrow with two lads set in, in and on a decent score, having knocked a bit of shine off the new ball, I think's a really good um, position for us, and if we could drive that past 400, then I do, do feel there was a little bit in that wicket for the majority of the time until that last 10 overs into the second new ball, so... Um, you know, if we can if we can do that, we could put ourselves in a really strong position. Thirty-three. I thought I'd ask a question. Um, <laughs> even you, were you a little bit nervous on ninety-nine? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Twelve once balls. Once you get to yeah, once you get three overs in, I think you start, and the crowd are on your back a little bit. Um, well, that's what it, it felt like anyway. <laughs> is it? Um, is, is it, is it ner- it's not nerves as such. It's just the getting over the line. Is it? Get on with it. Yeah, I think you sort of. You're feeling everything that everyone else is feeling. Like, get on with it, get it out of the way. Um, but you yeah, there. you got there. Are, are you a stats man? You're a records man. Did you know you have, have, how big this, how big this hundred is? No, I, not massively driven by it. Apart from beating cookies, the only thing that really <laughs> bothers me. So he was very magnanimous, as, as I, I'm sure I'm sure you'd expect. It is, yeah. Just, just, a, just a quick one. Let, let's, 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 let's throw heads tomorrow, Joe. Um, you, you said it's doing, it's, it's doing a bit out there and, and you, know, you have got runs on the board. What would be a good score, do you think, for, for England to get tomorrow? 700 would be a good score. Um, but if we can get up to 400, I think that'd be great. Um, but, yeah, we, I think we're in a good position. So anything more on, on what we've done today, I think, is a bonus. And, um, look, it's not, it's not doing all sorts. It's, it's pretty good wicket. It's very slow. One of the stats has done it's done the least here since two thousand and five. There you go. But it's it's not felt like that. It's felt like it has you know, the wobble seems have gripped in and it has done enough. So I, I guess we just play what's in front of us. We look to utilise what, what there is there to tomorrow and, and see if we can um, do what we've done well for a period now, taking twenty more wickets. Family here today? Uh, yeah, there is, uh, it's always nice, yeah. Lovely. Thanks for talking to us, Joe. Well played. There we go. Well done. He's one happy chap, isn't he? Yeah, and so he should be. Uh, and I'm glad. I mean, you're a brave man to ask him about the reverse sweep. Um, but it was, a, it was a brilliant innings. And, yeah, he, you can just see that little glint in his eye, can you? And he should be. And he should have it. Yeah. I, I'm just delighted. And I, and I did like your question because I think this England side are going to be so much better with Rooty playing the root ball way. You know, when he plays the way that we know he can and, you know, he just occupies the crease, you ask any opposing player, any team, which way would you want Joe Root to play and you'd want him to play expansively. The way that you wouldn't want Joe Root to play is like he's played today where he just, he's yeah, just got an amazing no. ability of just manoeuvring the ball into the space, into the gap, against the seamers, against the spinner. And if he can carry on in that vein, which I, I'm pretty sure he's going to, uh, he is that glue, he's that rock that everyone else can bat around. So, it's uh, yeah, it's always a joy when you're seeing Joe get any amount of runs. He's just got that 
it's that process and that routine that we've seen for so many years and, and I'm pretty sure we're going to see it for a few more. Andy Zaltzman, I, well, I, we, we said in a sort of semi-joking way during commentary that batsmen who score hundreds, they always say it was doing all sorts, uh, <laughs> as, as Joe alluded to there. Your, your, your stats suggested different, didn't they? Well, they, yeah, they did. So this is the ball tracking stats uh, on the, the Crickviz system suggested that there was less swing for seamers in the first 80 overs of this test match than in any comparable period of a test in England in their database and that goes back as you said to 2005 relatively relatively little seam movement as well and and combined it was the second least movement in the opening 80 overs for seam bowlers in a test in England in that time um, so what that doesn't tell you though is that whether individual balls were doing a bit more that's just the average movement from every ball so it doesn't you know maybe need to dig a little more into uh, into those details but uh, yeah Roots Century as you said his 33rd tied with Alistair Cook four players ahead of, him, ahead of him on 34 test centuries internationally Sunil Gavaskar Mahela Joe Wardner Eunice Khan and uh, Brian Lara so some pretty uh, tidy names for him to aim at in his uh, next innings and then five players further ahead with Sachin Tendulkar's 51 centuries still some way off but what Root has, st- has done incredibly well in the last four years is convert his 50s into centuries 16 of his last 31 50 plus scores since the start of 2021 he's converted into centuries prior to that he'd converted 17 out of 66 so it had been something that people have talked about a lot with his uh, with his batting that despite being incredibly consistent and uh, average in the high 40s hadn't scored maybe as many hundreds as uh, as he would have liked but the last four years have uh, really seen him rectify uh, that since that Bumrah reverse scoop that you were talking about seven tests at least a 50 in each of those seven tests the third time he's had a run of seven consecutive tests uh, with a 50 plus score no other England player has had two such sequences in their career so this is Root's third um, in that time he's averaged 86 with a strike rate of 59 prior to that under Basball he'd averaged 50 so still good albeit with a bit inconsistent passages with a strike rate of 74 and in his career prior to that if you take it from the breakthrough year he had in 2014 his average was 51 and his strike rate 57 so he has as you said basically gone back to playing that classic Rootian way that we saw uh, through uh, most of his career up to Basball when he became much more aggressive still effective but perhaps a little easier uh, to dismiss that uh, he was stuck on 99 for 12 balls before scoring off the 13th and that's the most balls an England player has spent on 99 since Graham Hick against Zimbabwe in 2000 and Joe Root himself had never never had more than five balls stuck on 99 in his career so a little bit of added drama before he tied Alistair Cook's record.